that video, that stop motion was a lot more difficult to do than I was originally intending for it to be. I accidentally shot all the photos in RAW and I was doing it photo wise. Um, and I accidentally shot them all in RAW, so I needed to put them on Photoshop and then export them from Photoshop. But because my laptop is a little bit on the slow side at the moment, I couldn't do them all in one batch. I had to do them in batches of eight and then export them individually. And that's not what we're talking about in today's video. What we're talking about in today's video is my shelf and more importantly, what the gear is on my shelf. There we go. There we go. I'm in focus now. <laughs> a couple months ago, I made a video about building this shelf. But what I didn't do is I didn't go into detail about what was actually on my shelf, what gear I had to put on the shelf. So that's what this video is going to be about. Let me just get changed real quick and we'll get into that. Let's go. See you in a bit. Uh, hello. So this is my, uh, th this is my uh, shelf. This is, this is my, this is my camera gear shelf. Now, as you can see, there's a couple of slots which are a little bit empty and that is solely for the reason that I am using that gear right now. I'm using my camera, I'm using my kit lens and I'm using my microphone just to record this video. But I will go into detail what those piece of gear are when I get to the sections of the shelf that I house them in. So without any further ado, let's get started. The first one that I think we should start with is let's just start at the top and work our way down okay something just fell off there let's move on <laughs> so oh so the top of my desk doesn't really have much in terms of actual like gear for my camera stuff however what it does have is my camera charging station that was weird i do apologize what i have here is my battery chargers for my camera body which are the lp eight camera batteries which is quite a rare battery as far as i'm aware for um canon cameras i don't know many other canon cameras that use this battery which is kind of bad when i'm trying to buy new cameras and none of them share my batteries but you know we deal with on top of that i also normally put my pelican case in here it's an off-brand pelican case it is a go friends hard case for SD cards. It houses one, two, three, four, five, six, 12 SD cards and 12 micro SD cards. So it's just a really good little hard case for your SD cards. On top of that, I have just this little micro USB cable for whenever I need to charge any of my GoPros or my gimbals or my light. All my accessories charge off the same cable, which is good. Let's move down a level, shall we? So, we're down a level now. I do apologize if I'm speaking really quickly. I've just got a lot of stuff that I need to get through. So, let's move quickly. So, the first layer is my camera body and camera lenses. This is kind of like my main level, shall I, I tend to call it. So, we've got the two compartments here and here. We've got the compartment for my lenses and I've got the compartment for my camera bodies. Start with the lenses, work away this way. So we first off have my lenses, the lenses that I use for my camera. It's the EF slash EFS um, lens mount. So all of these cameras are for that mount. The first one that I have is the Tamron 300, 300, um, the Cameron 70 to 300. I was gonna say 300 to 700, but it's definitely not that. Um, it's a nice, good, cheap, camera lens it comes with image stabilization built in it's tamron's own stabilization which which does work it's a little bit jumpy from time to time but overall it does work it is a very loud camera particularly with the on body stabilization not body on the, uh, uh, with especially with the on lens stabilization and the focus tend to be quite loud which ain't great if you're trying to record something a bit closer but chances are you don't want to be using this for vlogging so i don't really ever really come it come into contact with that issue so overall i would say it's a very good lens moving on we have the second lens i ever bought my tamron was the first lens i ever bought this one is the second lens i ever bought and it is a 14 millimeter by samyang if i were to go back in time knowing what i know now i would not have bought a cine lens as the second lens i ever bought however i haven't sold it and i haven't gotten rid of it purely on the fact that I still use it to this day. I still use 14 millimeters to this day, probably because I have a cropped sensor on my camera. Here it is. 
yeah, goes to 3.1. So again, it's not the best in low light situations, but most of my lenses aren't. It's not bad in terms of my lenses, but it's still quite restricting if I want to do like nighttime photography. I've only really got the one lens that I can use. I'll get to that in a sec. However, despite all of the flaws, it is a nice lens to have. I'm not going to be replacing it anytime soon. Speaking of good in low light situations, ha! My nifty 50. My Nifty 50. I genuinely believe that every single photographer should have the Nifty 50 in their camera ge gear somewhere, just because of how versatile of a lens it is. On top of that, it goes to 8.1 on the f-stop, which makes it my fastest lens. And then this little section here is where my kit lens normally goes. It is the EF-S 18 to 55, 3.5 to 5.6 on the f-stop does have inbuilt stabilization on the lens it's, just, it's a decent lens it does what i need it to do it, i'm not sure if you can see but there's like a little white bag back there that is a drone from wish that i got thinking it was an actual like discounted version or like a pre-used version of the dji mivic unfortunately it wasn't i opened the box and went this ain't right so i haven't used it i don't want to use it because i want to sell it um, and then use that money to buy an actual proper good drone. Let's have a look at these ones, yeah? So here is where I keep my camera bodies. This is where I keep my GoPros. I have the Hero 5 Session and I have the Hero 7 Black. I got the Hero 5 Session originally because I was looking for the cheapest GoPro that I could find. It's the smallest out of the GoPros as far as I'm aware, but that does come with some drawback. One of them is that it overheats so quickly and on top of that it does not have a screen on the back and then i got this mo much more recently i got this in the past year it is a great gopro it has the screen on the back it's not the newest model in the world but it still records i actually think that this gopro has more video capability than my actual camera which is a little bit sad but we move on so there's a couple of boxes behind them which is essentially just loads of different like bits and bobs different different loads of different like instruction manuals and then a box with just like a load of cables and stuff and this one and this one has yeah battery chargers for my camcorder i will get to my camcorder in a sec but then also this little macro photography stand this is a really helpful bit piece of kit which i never use because i don't really do that much macro photography you might be able to tell already i am a little bit of a massive hoarder shall we shall we go down a level i think we shall so this is the best angle that i can go with for all of this stuff in here this is genuinely my stabilization box However, there's some other stuff. The main stuff is these big two white bags, essentially. Inside these bags are, it's like a light box, essentially, where you can change out the background of it and then the LEDs at the, on the roof and it shines a really bright LED and the walls are all reflecting the light back onto it and it's for product photography. The reason I have two is because I made a rookie mistake when it comes to Christmas present asking for and I sent the same list of Christmas presents to two different people, to my mum and my girlfriend, because they were just like, what do you want for Christmas? And I was like, I don't know, nothing. And they're like, you have to get, tell us something. So I was like, okay, here's the list. And they both got me the same thing. <laughs> Moving on, I will get all of the rest of the non-stabilization stuff out of the way from this bag. We've got a plug and then an HDMI cable. It goes from eight, micro HDMI to a normal HDMI. This is to connect my my uh, you camera, that's the word I was looking for, to my uh, monitor. Now onto actual stabilization stuff in my stabilization drawer. The first ones are my mini GoPros. I've got this mini miniature GoPro from Manfrotto. Got this for Christmas, very nice GoPro. I keep saying GoPro, tripod. This tripod is very good. It's, it just has your three standard legs and then if you press this button here you can move the head and then whenever you and when wherever you put it you lock it into place and it don't move so this is a great little tripod and this has kind of like overtaken my other tripod my gorilla tripod this is a standard really cheap joby gorilla tripod if you're any if you're into youtube at all and you're into vlogging you know what a gorilla pod is chances are you've got a gorilla pod but what it is for those who don't know is it's a tripod with legs that are segmented into small little balls which you can variate 
into loads of different positions. It's essentially a tripod for rough terrain, essentially. And you can wrap it around trees. You can like curl it into a ball to make it like a really low, low on the ground tripod. At the moment, I use this to put my lights and my microphone on more than anything else. And then the last things that I have in here are my magic arms. Magic arms are one of those things that every photographer, filmmaker should have in their arsenal. Basically, for those who don't know, magic arms are metallic arms that have a joint at the wrist and the shoulder and a joint at the elbow with a little screw and you screw it into plates and then all joints lock into plates and then you unscrew it and then all joints loosen up again. I tell you what, I genuinely feel like I've got the back of an eight year old. But we move on. So in here, a load of stuff. Let's start with the weird stuff I guess. My props that I have. I've seen a lot of people on Instagram like shooting through a cardboard tubes and I want to get into that style of photography like more creative style of photography and then also I've seen people use styrofoam for fake snow and stuff so I've got them stuff like that and then I'm also gathering a load of different props that I have and just keeping them here however those are some of the only props that I have that are actually in my shelves as well as that I also have like this little glass case which will be good for product photography. I've kept the display shelves for my GoPros for times when I need to shoot my GoPros like in this video you've already seen me using these two things so this is where I keep them. Other than props my this shelf is my audio shelf 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 yeah yeah it's a shelf it's one of those it's a shelf that you pull out yeah. Draw this is my audio draw and it's my filter Draw. I would have my microphone in there, but I'm using it. It is the Rode Video Mic Go. Very good starter video camera. Again, for those who don't know what this is, this is a dead cat. It's designed to stop wind from interfering with your audio on your microphone. The Zoom H1N. When I was looking for an audio recorder, an external audio recorder, I was originally wanting to get the H4N because that's what I was trained on in college. However, I couldn't afford it. So I got the H1N and it has served me beautifully ever since. This is probably the best purchase that, I ever that I've ever ever made in terms of um, value for money. It is such a handy little recorder. Got UV filters for my 50mm and my zoom lens. My kit lens has its UV filter on, mainly because I screwed it on too tight and I can't get it off. And then on top of that, I also have an ND filter here as well. What is an ND filter, Jack? I'm glad you asked. An ND filter is well, ND stands for negative density, which basically means the more dense something is, the darker the glass would be. And when it's a variable ND, yeah, you can twist it like a focus ring and it just makes the glass darker. And it seriously looks like magic when you do it. They're great to have when you're in like a really bright day and it's just a bit too much for your sensor. Or on the other hand, you wanna get a long exposure shot during the day which is just a pain in the bum. Um, and variable ND filters help you tremendously with that. The last thing in here is I've got some filters for a ring light. Seeing that all my lenses have different diameters to their glass, it's good to have different filters for your lenses. Moving on. As you can probably tell from the footage that I've shot, that, that, that I will be shooting after I shoot this, this is like my packs. So let's start off with the thing that I was just talking about, my actual ND filter. Because my ND filter isn't in the case, it's in this bag. This bag is a case that is supposed to carry filters. Um, but what I'm using it for is to carry my ND filter and then all of the adapters for my ND filter. As I said, my kit lens, my zoom lens and my prime have all different diameters for their front glass. Meaning if I wanted to use ND filters, I would need to get separate ND filters for all of them. So instead of that and wasting all of that money, because ND filters are very expensive, I got the one ND filter and got a load of adapters. So this is what an ND filter looks like. As you can see, as more I turn it, it gets dark and you can't see me anymore like this. But then when I turn it back, hello, you can see me again. How cool is that? Moving on, next one that I have in here is my, um, this is my camcorder. I didn't forget what was in here, I just forgot the word for it. This is my old camcorder, like, 
some of my really old videos, which I don't want anyone to watch, which but it's still public probably, um, were recorded on this. It is the HXDC2 or HX-DC2 by Panasonic. It's one of those old like pistol grip um, camcorders. Flip, flip screen so you can see, so you can record both ways. Audio quality in it isn't actually that bad, but the video quality, huh. I'm not throwing it away again because I am a massive hoarder and I want to keep it for, for sentimental reasons. So there we go. This is like my emergency camera gear bag. In here, I, I have two micro USB cables, two USB type C cables, one short, one long, a lightning cable, the cable that powers my ring light, a spare road aux cable, pencil, a pen, roll of Gorilla tape, a very small multi-tool on a key ring, a torch, flashlight thing on a key ring. I forget what term we use and what term the Americans use all the time. So I'm gonna use both, a torch fla flashlight on a key ring, which 100% has lost its battery. And then these two other really cool things, which are like these pads of Velcro on one side and then like a sticky resin on the second side. So yeah, that's good to have. Moving on, I'm not gonna tell you what's in these next two packs because there's so much in them. My GoPro gear. My GoPro gear that I got, I've done a video on it. It's the video that I also did the cat pass in. Um, I already went into detail about what's in here, but it's a load of different stuff for GoPros and making using GoPros a lot better. And then finally in this drawer is my lens cleaning kit. I'm not gonna open it because everything will fall out. It'll be very difficult to get everything back in, but it's got stuff like swabs. It got, it's got stuff like an air rocket blower thing. It's got cleaning solution. It's got gloves to make sure I don't put fingerprints on my, on my lens, on my, on my, even worse, my sensor. So it's just got a load of different stuff for cleaning stuff in. I'm not gonna tell you everything that's in here because it's a lot. Last thing that's on my shelf, my gimbal, my Ronin S. And it fits perfectly. It fits so perfectly in there. Did you see that? Let me show you again. How beautiful is that? You can just... Oh, I need my gimbal. Let me just... Pull it out for you. I'm so glad that this fits in there. Not gonna lie, it would've been better if it was like flush, but it's fine. I'm happy with it. Honestly, it's all good. But yes, yeah, so that's everything that's on my camera gear. Oh, that's on my actual camera shelf. As well as that, I have a very cheap glide cam, which I never figured out how to weigh properly. Um, I tried to weigh it um, many times over the course of my first year at university. However, I came to the conclusion that my camera was just a little bit too heavy or a little bit too light. I never figured out which one. So that is all of my camera gear that's on my shelf. My only other camera gear is my tripod and my lights. Um, and all of them are downstairs. I'm filming on my dad's tripod at the moment because my tripod is kind of knackered. But yeah, so I will head downstairs and I will go and I will quickly run through all of my lighting gear and, all, and my tripod. No, you won't. Hi, editor Jack here. You need to stop meeting like this. So as you could probably tell, this video has already reached about 20 minutes and I don't want to make my videos any longer than that. I've been trying to cut them down and this one's gotten out of hand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this video here and next week I'm going to pick up where I left off and I'm going to go through my lights and my tripod in next week's video. But yeah, I'm going to end this video here and I will see you guys next week. I um, hope you enjoyed this video. I apologize that it's a long one. If you've stuck around this long, please give this video a like. Please comment on this video. Say what you liked about the gear. Say if there's any gear that you think I should get. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I will see you guys later. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all of that lovely stuff. And I'll catch you guys later. Bye-bye.